fan. The field is just uh, immaculate and ivy on the outfield fences. It's it's just so cool. And uh, now there is a little bit of mystery. I never really made it clear why I was in Cold Spring till till the last game of the day ended at midnight. You know there was some there was some rain, so things got pushed back. But uh, so I'm still kind of sitting on a story that's going to be pretty good. I just can't. Uh, hopefully by next week's show we'll be able to talk about this story. But that there. There's a reason I was there. I didn't just drive two hours to sit in a cool ballpark and watch a couple of high school baseball games. But there was something. It was still it was well worth the trip. Just that ballpark alone, even on kind of a chilly, wet night, it's it's a cool place to be, and I'm glad I made the trip. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we call a tease. So you have to tune in next week to hear that story. Uh, by the way, I was, I was I played in the Randy Shaver, you know, classic, which benefits, uh, you know, Cancer Research at the University of Minnesota. Great event yesterday, and a bunch of my you know, part, playing partners who are big sports fans, big sports guys, were saying that uh, Siebert Field, the new Siebert Field, hosts a lot of high school, uh, you know, tournaments and games. Uh, so is that a place you can go and, and catch games, what, during the summer, I guess? Well, during the spring, I was, the fact, the very first high school baseball game I saw this year was at Siebert on a Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Oh, when cool. when the, oh, the regular wow. grass fields were all were all still unusable, yeah, they play a lot there. We have state tournament games there. That's one of our sites. It's our uh, we have four classes in, in baseball, and that's one of the sites we use for the first two rounds before the championship games at Target Field. Yeah, I'd encourage anybody. Siebert Field is is fantastic, you know, and and uh, it's every it, every piece of the field is artificial turf. Uh, great seats, just a great view anywhere you want to be in the ballpark. There, there's a berm you can sit on, bring your blanket and sit on the grass and have a great time. Yeah, it's fantastic, Jim. And congratulations to John Anderson, too. Uh, speaking of someone who's a friend of high school sports, John's a very classy guy, and it's great to see him have success. I know he treats the high school coaches in the state very well as well. Uh, let's go to your food and your tweet of the week. Yep, we're, we're combining the food of the week and the tweet of the week. And I tweeted this as after I left the ballpark in Cold Spring. I stopped at a, at a convenience store and I tweeted the following. Midnight in Cold Spring period. Sandwich period. From a convenience store. Here, period. At midnight. Seems wise, right? Eh, I don't know how wise it was, but I, had, I needed to get something to eat. And uh, I'm glad to report there were no after effects. Everything worked out fine. And... Uh, and it was a successful uh, midnight convenience store sandwich purchase. Well, you have uh, you have now passed one of the criteria for the Sports Writing Hall of Fame. <laughs> That's it. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I cleared that hurdle a long time ago, baby. <laughs> uh, no kidding. How about Tweet of the Week? Yeah. Or, or, uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Yep. Was the, is there a separate Tweet of the Week, or was the Tweet of the Week about no, that was, that was We combined gotcha. food and Tweet combined. of the Week. Yeah. <laughs> now I got you. All right, let's go to let's go to Anthem of the Week. Yeah, this was really neat. And if you go to my Twitter account at MSHSL John, you'll see a little brief snippet of video from Grand Rapids. A guy named Steve Cohorst, who was a coach there for a long, long time, played the national anthem on his harmonica before a section track. Oh, wow. Pete on his harmonica. How great is that? Wow. <laughs> The mouth harp is, it, it's a very interesting, I, you know, someone who plays the guitar and likes certain kinds of music, I should learn how to play the harmonica, but I just never, I've always been intimidated by it. It seems difficult. I, I, all musical instruments seem difficult to me, so I'm not going to. <laughs> <attempt>. <laughs> uh, let us honor the, let us honor now the late, great Steve Kersey. Yeah, we'll, we'll close with a, a tribute to Steve Kersey. He was a, an Iron Range legend. He died uh, last week at 97 years old. Just looking at, at this guy's obituary is amazing. And I didn't know Steve very well, but he was one of these guys. He was a coach and an official and an athletic director, just super involved with uh, high school sports in Minnesota. So he was a 1938 graduate of Chisholm High School, was a football, basketball, and track athlete. After college, he worked for the FBI. 1942, Ooh. he was drafted into the Army, and he was a fighter pilot. And, uh, but he was grounded. He had a hearing loss and a flight accident of some kind. And then after he got out of the army, he was hired by the school system in Gilbert up on the range. So he was a, a teacher, a coach, athletic director for decades and decades. He officiated. I don't even know if I have the full list. 
Yes, I know Steve officiated football, basketball, baseball, cross country, and track. He worked at our state track meet for 65 years. So I know a lot of people wow. who knew him, me included, were going to be thinking about Steve this week at the state track meet. He was the Region 7 delegate to the high school league for many years. He, he served a term on the board of directors. I don't know how many different halls of fame he's in, but you know, as a coach, as an official, as an AD. Um, and in, in 2006, the high school league established the Steve Kersey Award, which honors a, a delegate to the, to the high school league who most exemplifies Steve, Steve's dedication to the league. Just a great guy. And there was some good Twitter discussion after his death. Kyle Lampa, who's a guy up on the Iron Range, one of our great officials, tweeted, if there was an Iron Range Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore, Kurz would be on it. What a life, what a man. And all I could add to that, if there was a Mount Rushmore on the Iron Range, it would have to be made of iron. And Steve Kersey just, I think, really exemplified, uh, you know, people on the Iron Range just did so much for so many people in so many different areas. When you think about uh, uh, the FBI, a fighter pilot, and then and then decades and decades of service to kids and schools, just just a great uh, a great uh, Minnesotan. Uh, good stuff as always, John. I'm going to come to you for your final thought on the week or anything upcoming that you'd like to highlight. Uh, once again, you find all of our shows at talknorth.com. We cover pretty much everything in Minnesota sports plus business. Uh, you can subscribe at iTunes, subscribe at your favorite podcast app. Again, if you have the opportunity to listen via download as opposed to just streaming, we would appreciate it. Uh, helps us grow our network. And uh, we'll be back next week with another Preps Today with John Millay. Uh, thanks again to GourmetParlorPizza.com. Final thought, John. Yeah, I, th- I think, Jim, I would encourage anybody who wants to have some fun on a beautiful day, attend to one of these state tournaments, the softball tournament down in Mankato Thursday and Friday, uh, the track meet at Hamlin Friday and Saturday, and then, like I said, next week, uh, baseball, golf, lacrosse. There's so much going on, and it's just so much fun to watch these kids compete and see everybody cheer for them. And uh, sportsmanship's great, and especially on a beautiful, beautiful, sunny, comfortable day, there's nothing better. Absolutely. Great stuff as always, John. Thanks. We'll talk to you next week. You bet.